Hi, and welcome. In this video, we're going to have a close look at potentiometers. And we'll board a passive volume pedal. It might be quite a simple effect on its own, but it's an essential building block for all other pedals to come. Besides, it's got its uses all on its own. Oftentimes, you don't need an active booster pedal. For a quiet part in a song or when trying out new ideas at rehearsal, it's ideal. Besides, it's a great learning opportunity. For the first time in this video series, we'll also start to manipulate our audio signal. It's time to turn on the oscilloscope. Yeah, right. I can turn it off. Okay. The oscilloscope helps us to understand how our audio signal works and what's happening to it when we start to manipulate it. If we hook up this audio signal, the screen looks like a hot garbled mess. The oscilloscope needs to be synchronized to the frequency of the signal. So we get to see the stable waveform of our audio signal. We can now see three qualities of our signal. The wavelength and thus the sound's frequency. The shape of the wave, for instance a sine wave, sawtooth, or complex shape like a clean or distorted guitar. And most importantly for us, the amplitude. It's shown by the amount the signal's voltage oscillates up and down. Amplitude is the term we use to describe the physical property of the signal. Volume is our perception of the amplitude. The signal oscillates up and down around a mid-voltage or bias level. In cables, most guitars and passive pedals, like the one we are building, the signal oscillates around ground or zero volts. As the oscilloscope shows voltage levels on the y-axis, we now know that we have to lower the voltage differential of our audio signal around ground to lower its volume. Now that we've covered the basics of audio signals, let's return to our volume pedal. We'll base it on a simple circuit called a voltage divider. It's just two resistors in series, between a voltage source and another. For instance, an audio signal and ground. The voltage between the two resistors is our output. Its level is determined by the input voltage and resistance values of the two resistors. The smaller the upper resistor is in relation to the sum of both resistors, the closer the output voltage is going to be to the input voltage. The smaller the lower resistor is, the closer the output voltage is going to be to the ground voltage. The voltage differential between the top and bottom, between our signal and ground, is divided by the resistors. For instance, if the resistor values were equal, we'd halve the input voltage at the output. We'd halve the amplitude. So we could implement this by sticking two fixed resistors together in our good old true bypass circuit. But we couldn't change the volume. Some people might consider this a drawback in a volume pedal. But luckily, non-fixed resistors do exist. Potentiometers. Let's open one up and have a look at its guts. We've got three terminals, a circuit board with some black tracks on it, a shaft we can turn and a wiper that turns along with it. The outer two terminals are connected to the track, which acts as a resistor between the two. The resistance between the outer two terminals gives the pot its resistance rating. The middle terminal is connected to the rotatable wiper that rides upon the track. It divides the track's resistance into two halves. Wait a minute. Yeah. That's right, a potentiometer is a voltage divider. That's actually where the name comes from. It's a device to change a voltage potential, if wired up in the right way. One wire for an incoming signal, one for ground, and one for our outgoing signal. Then stick all that into our true bypass circuit discussed in this video, and hey presto, we're done. Let's give it a try. If the knob is turned all the way clockwise, the output volume is practically speaking equal to our input volume. If we rotate it anti-clockwise, 
lower and lower until it is off, because the output is now grounded. That's great, but all the action seems to be happening over here. What's up with that? Shouldn't all the voltage change and thus amplitude change happen in a linear fashion? Indeed it is. Everything in this pedal is working in a linear fashion. Our ears, on the other hand, don't. They work logarithmically. For a sound to be double the volume, it has to be ten times as strong. Okay, so that's why all the change happens at the quiet end. We'll have to use a pot with an audio taper. In these, the track is covered with a resistive material in an approximately logarithmic, non-linear way. If you want to buy audio tapered pots, look for the A in the designation, as in audio. Or B for linear pots. Why B? It's the next letter in the alphabet. Ah! Nine! B! A 250 kilo ohm pot matches well with passive instruments. If you're using an active guitar or want to use the passive volume pedal between effects, you want to use a 50 kilo ohm audio taper pot. For reasons of impedance, which is a fancy way of saying stuff interacts. It's more complicated. In a pinch, either will do. If you want to build this pedal for yourself, it'll cost you about $15 in parts. I've put a link to the schematic, layout diagram and bill of materials in the description below. I've also added in an optional status LED as discussed in the previous video. I wanted to make my personal build as small as possible and that's why I left out the DC jack and LED. Next time we'll put our knowledge of pots to use, learn about capacitors, high and low pass filters and we'll build a tone knob. Now seeing that you are still around, you either enjoyed the video or you are masochist. In either case, why not click like? And if you want the channel to grow, share it. Be as kind. Thank you.